what's up hello I hope you all are doing well welcome back to our channel today I wanted to respond to being tagged by Bex in the could do better or the butterface book tag uh, which she did last week and tagged me because we we do like to tag each other from time to time so these are gonna be my answers to that tag which is all about book covers that we feel have some room for improvement. I want to start off by saying that I think that book covers are a very interesting area of graphic design and art and I know that a lot of artists and graphic designers put a lot of work and a lot of thought into uh, the covers that they are asked to design for books and I don't really understand what the back and forth and requirement type pieces are from publishers alongside authors. I'm not really sure how all of that works in tandem to choose and select and design a cover for a book but I'm gonna try and do this with an eye towards not hating on book covers because it it really feels to me like that's someone's art and I don't just want to come out here and say like this is blatantly bad because good and bad art are in the eye of the beholder so I could think something is totally terrible and somebody else could think that it's beautiful which is the whole point of artistic and creative work. So with that in mind, let's get started. So the first question is, say it, don't spray it, the cover with the most offensive use of type. And I didn't really love uh, the word offensive in here since there's nothing particularly offensive about using type. So I, I sort of reworked this to be the most ineffective use of type. Uh, the way that I was taught to critique creative work was always about whether something was effective or successful as opposed to good or bad. So what do I think is a book with a very ineffective use of type? And for me, that is a book called Make Your Home Among Strangers. I read this with my book club. This was our, our March of 2020 book, which we never got to discuss. Uh, but I, this cover, having read that story now, I don't think that this cover is effective. I don't think the text being across the entire cover is particularly effective. It's not clear to me what this does for the story. These particular colors aren't really pointed or poignant or are really connected in any way to what the story is about. And not that every cover needs to be connected to the story, but I just don't feel that this typeface and the color of the type really add anything to it. It doesn't give you a good sense of what the story is about. It doesn't even really convey the mood or the tone particularly well, I don't I don't feel. So this just is very ineffective to me and I would love to see some different covers for this if there are any others. I'm sure there are and I should go look them up. The second question is she's serving Reese's Book Club, which is the book with the most commercial book club energy. Interestingly, I picked a book that I read in book club. I had my book club at the library read this and it is The Ensemble by Isha Gable. And this book is brightly colored, but also very minimalist, I feel. You've got that bouquet on the front, you've got that solid color background, you've got the solid block text, and it's bright enough to be attractive, but it also kind of gives you that disaffected millennial vibe. More on that, you should check out Claire Reed's books and her series about that genre of literature that's come out, millennial fiction. I feel like this book fits into that category. It's it's pretty enough to be picked up, but I think the brightness of it belies the somber nature of the text, and that's exactly what you would want in a book club book. You want something that's going to be eye-catching, uh, but then you read the back and you're like, oh, this is a beautiful book about this sort of mildly somber, beautiful topic. And given the fact that we read this in my library book club, I definitely think that this fits the prompt. The third prompt is yes girl give us nothing which is a cover of a book with seemingly no energy put into it. I get the feeling that I'm going to take some criticism for this choice but I chose Fledgling by Octavia Butler. I've seen other covers of this book and those other covers are far more compelling. I get that this blood spatter is supposed to be connected to the plot. I get that it's supposed to be minimalist and convey just sort of that eerie horror type feeling. I get the point. I get what I get what's trying to be done here, but at the same time like is that is that it? It's all it's all we're doing. It's all we're doing here. Nothing 
nothing else. Maybe there's something I'm missing. Maybe I just haven't done enough research into the way that the rest of the covers for uh, her books are designed, but this feels not super. And if the intention is to be minimalist, that is totally in conflict with a book where characters have so much complex, detailed, rich history to them that it just, it doesn't, it doesn't fit. This, this story is so complicated and there's a whole like species that you need to learn about and they have a history and you spend time learning about their history alongside the main character in this book. And there's just such complexity to it that I don't feel like this cover really, it doesn't, it doesn't do the complexity of the book justice. I get that it's supposed to be foreboding. I just feel, I just feel, I just feel like they could have done more. Someone could have done more. And it's clear that other people have done more because I've seen other covers and they're so much more engaging. So the fourth prompt is a face only a mother could love, a book that has a cover so hideous but the story is so good that you keep it around. I've chosen A Prayer for Owen Meany by John Irving. So this is the author, John Irving. That's who this person is. I didn't know that at the time I originally reviewed this book and it's very very obvious in that review. Anyway, I don't know that that adds anything to this cover. This is an interesting like gold brown orangey not quite rust color that is not beautiful. The back is just a quote from Stephen King on top of that same color and then there's this big black and white brooding face of John Irving. I keep other books on top of this because I don't love it. On the contrary we have this other copy of A Prayer for Owen Meany which is much more beautiful. Funnily enough, this is Beck's copy. So both of these copies were the, the two that we read when we were asked to read and mark up this book in high school. This was really our first foray into buying a book with the intention of writing in it, which we both bristled at at the time. So I bought this copy, she bought this copy. Uh, I think this one is hideous. She thinks this one is hideous. I think this is beautiful. Uh, and I think that the text and the imagery in this copy, which Bex doesn't like, is far more successful and effective at achieving the tone of the story than this copy is. And this copy is probably meant to be some sort of collector type edition. It's got, the, you know, it looks nice. It's the modern library edition from, I don't know. Anyway, I don't, I don't love it. And I don't love the fact that John Irving, yes, John Irving's face is just, but I love this story. So it stays with me. I love this story so much I have two copies. So the fifth prompt is take one thing off before leaving the house, a cover that could use one fewer elements. And for that I chose Helen Huang's The Bride Test. I've read all of her novels in this series so far that have been published and this one, let me tell you what I, what I would remove because I don't think it's adding anything, is the little swoopy like line of the plane into the heart shape. I feel like we could either make that less prominent, like move it further back and maybe lighten, lighten it up so it's a little more transparent or we could just remove the whole thing altogether. I. I get what they're going for there. I get what they're trying to convey with the plane and the heart. I I got it, I got it. It just feels a little too heavy handed and I think it that without it, the cover would look a lot more stark and a lot more inviting. And I just think that it feels unnecessary. So I would take that out. And lastly, the prompt is hype. Beast, which is a cover that is going for all the trends at the same time. Now looking back at all of the books that I have read and the covers of them that I have read, I had a really hard time with this prompt because I was looking for something that had just a lot going on, a bunch happening on the front cover um, and a bunch of really popular things happening at the same time and I, I guess I tend to try and read where possible editions of the book that, that are aesthetically pleasing. So I struggled with this one, but ultimately, and this is again something that I'm definitely about to take criticism for, but I chose Casey McQuinson's Red, White, and Royal Blue. And I just feel like there's a real trend happening with the solid color, the block text, and then the image on the front of the two main contemporary romance characters 
not like cheekily not looking at each other I feel like that's totally the thing and I'm all for a solid color background I'm all for block text but like the way that they don't look at each other like we're all doing that now every romance novel that has been published in the last two to three years that's an overstatement but you know what I mean it's always the two characters who are like mm, I don't know about you type of faces and that's totally what's going on here there are two trends I have seen a lot in contemporary romance books in terms of text and it's either blocky text in a solid color example a or like loopy handwriting type scripty font in either black or white and I feel like they're going for both here they have like the little like whoop like little curviness to the block letters which lends itself like a fun feeling uh, but then we've also got like I said the block text with the two with the two main characters being like hmm I don't really know about you I just feel like this was trying for a lot of the trends and it like it hit it hit them totally hit the trends this was a super hyped book I read it I mean <laughs> it is what it is and the words of Cornelius Fudge that's that and no harm done so I don't tag anyone because I would go and tag Rebecca but here we are uh, if you are interested in doing this tag I will link the original creator down below you can give it a try for yourself it's kind of interesting I had to put more thought into it than I thought that I was going to especially with this last book cover as always thank you so much for watching anything that you want to know about us is indeed in the description and we'll see you very soon I want an interesting book cover that's connected to a finer, more detailed point of the plot. That's what I want from my contemporary romance covers, I guess. We've come around to it. This was, this was fine.